Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, the world's most exciting podcast, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, New York Times best-selling author and National Radio Hall of Fame inductee, Michael Savage. I have strongly recommended to every governor to deploy the National Guard in sufficient numbers that we dominate the streets. Mayors and governors must establish an overwhelming law enforcement presence until the violence has been quelled. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. I've always believed and continue to believe that the National Guard is best suited for performing domestic support to civil authorities in these situations in support of local law enforcement. I say this not only as Secretary of Defense, but also as a former soldier and a former member of the National Guard. The option to use active duty forces in a law enforcement role should only be used as a matter of last resort and only in the most urgent and dire of situations. We are not in one of those situations now. I do not support invoking the Insurrection Act. And the Savage Band plays on. As the ship goes down, we are on the stern of the ship. We are enjoying ourselves. We're playing a wonderful piece of opera, uh, Pagliacci the Clown, very famous piece, and then a little sound here and there. And today we're going to talk about the divine comedy called America. The divine comedy called America today is the name of the show. Uh, in 2020, we're only halfway through it. After all, it's only June. When the year started, we're in the middle of the greatest economy the country had uh, ever seen. Well, we're halfway through the year. And since then, wow, what a year, huh? Let's see what's happened in such a short time. A phony impeachment, which was an insurrection of its own kind, uh, created by Nancy Pelosi on bogus charges for the first time in our country's history. But we lived through it. In Australia, not our country, of course, the entire country was on fire. Forests set on fire by arsonists burning down a good part of the uh, nation. California suffering a wildfire outbreak as well, probably due to arson. Then a Chinese virus that the Chinese government lied about begins to uh, spread around China and then around the world. And the once respected WHO ran cover for them as more and more people got infected. The pandemic then engulfed the world, causing entire nations to shut down and people to be locked up in their homes for months on end. This resulting lockdown caused massive unemployment and thousands of businesses closing down to never reopen. The stock market lost all of its gains for the last 10 years in only a couple of weeks. The government created trillions more in debt by throwing money at the problem, boosting up the stock market. Murder hornets started showing up on our shores. Hundreds of billions of locusts swarm East Africa and South Asia. Then Americans watch a cop murder a man on video. Results in protests and riots all over the nation. The left wing is activated and the street thugs destroy businesses. Businesses that have suffered from being unnecessarily shut down by public health uh, hornets of their own kind. Democrat leaders in these cities and states tell the police to stand down. They permit the looting and the violence to go on. A war on police begins as many police are shot and killed all over the nation. And today, and we're only halfway through the year, the defense secretary, Mark Esper, breaks with the president of the United States. And he says, no, I do not support using troops. I'm not going to believe in the uh, in, uh, invoking the Insurrection Act. We are a nation in chaos. What will come during the rest of the year? <clears throat> what can we expect? <clears throat> Sorry. Well, hurricanes are on the horizon in Florida, tornadoes in the Midwest, earthquakes on the West Coast, fires, another pandemic. Short of a foreign army invading America, many think we are a broken nation. We used to have a great nation, and look where we are today. But the question to you is, Uh, who do you blame for letting these riots get out of control? Because I am an American just like you. I happen to have a radio show for these last 26 years. I've been blessed with a radio show. I've been blessed with the ability to think and write books. 
And I'm asking myself the same questions I'm asking you. Who do you blame for letting these riots get out of control? And we can say the governors, we could say the mayors, we wouldn't be wrong. But has Trump really done enough? What would you recommend to stop the street thugs yesterday? What would you do? I asked the other day, should the military be brought in to quell the riots? Of course it should have been done. I mean, let's be clear, it's been done before. Thugs have appeared before, going back to the 50s. Dwight D. Eisenhower, the great leader of World War II, Supreme Allied Commander, had to call in the military. I gave you the whole list of the times presidents have brought in the military. Many of you may remember the uh, situation with the Watts riots. It was only when the 82nd Airborne went in and opened fire that the thugs went home and calmed down. See, something you don't know about thugs is they don't respond to talk. They only respond to a smack across the head or a bullet through the eyes. I know you don't want to hear it. I know that we're not living in the America where you ever want to see that, neither do I. Do you want to see the carnage that you're seeing? Do you want to see your cities burning any further? How do you feel when you see these skinny white punks from the suburbs dressed in black, wearing their mother's underwear underneath the black outfits, breaking into stores and stealing at will, and the police who can stop them deballed and emasculated by the vermin who run these cities. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about seeing looters rolling up in Rolls Royces to ransack upscale shops? How do you feel about that? What do you think about that? Who, what would you do to stop it? Hmm? Well, I'm sure many of you have opinions on these matters, and I do as well, and we'll talk about that. And before we go on to some of your calls, I want to quote Booker T. Washington, one of the great African-Americans of all time, an advisor to presidents. Here is a man who was born into slavery, by the way. Born as a slave on a tobacco plantation in the Virginia Hills. He didn't run around screaming for reparations and blame Whitey for anything. And during one of the lowest periods of race relations in American history, Booker T. Washington became one of the greatest leaders of the African-American uh, people and a voice for the conscience of the American South. And what did Booker T. Washington write? He wrote many things, but there's something I will quote you right now. And if you want to uh, see a copy of it, you can go to michaelsavage.com. We put it up there for your, well, so you can download it. It's simple. I didn't write it. You can get mad at me all you want, but I'm quoting this great man. He wrote this in 1911. There is another class of colored people, he wrote, who make a business of keeping the troubles, the wrongs, and the hardships of the Negro race before the public. Having learned that they are able to make a living out of their troubles, they have grown into the settled habit of, adverti of advertising their wrongs partly because they want sympathy and partly because it pays. Some of these people do not want the Negro to lose his grievances because they do not want to lose their jobs. End quote. It's from Booker T. Washington. Now, if you want to expunge that from this radio show saying I'm a racist, then you'd have to call Booker T. Washington a racist. But remember, he was born into slavery. And unlike the hate mongers, and the thieves that we see in the streets, he didn't ask for reparations. And while I'm telling you this story, you'll see who keeps this going. You'll see what they're doing. You'll never believe what I'm about to read to you. In the midst of all of this, just a few minutes ago, Governor Gavin Newsom snuck in an executive order to expand earlier vo early voting in the election of 2020. He just did it this morning in the middle of all the rioting. He didn't call in the National Guard. He didn't stop the looting, didn't stop the rioting, nothing. What he did was expands early voting in the election in order to make sure that he and his fellow co-conspirators are not thrown out of office for failing the people of the state of California. So I opened the show uh, calling it the Divine Comedy, and I asked you what else will 2020 bring, and I suggested the year is only half over. We learned a lot of things, by the way, during these riots. We learned an awful lot of things. We learned that our Second Amendment is almost useless, by the way. What the hell good is a Second Amendment if you can't use it? I mean, you, you realize you can't use it. You realize that the Instagram scum that are out there rioting, 
couldn't even be stopped by the police. What you going to do when they come for you? What would Newsom do to you if you defended your own property? What would you do? Mm hmm. I'll let you figure it out. Where is the conservative movement in America? There is none. Maybe there never was one. Where is the right wing in America? There is none. There never was one. Uh, where are the militias in America? There are none. There never were any. They were all invented by the radical left. Do you understand what's going on? Do you understand that we have had a revolution and we're not going to have one? Do you understand you are seeing the civil war? Only it's a one-sided civil war. You get that yet? I hope you understand where we are. The good ship America has hit an iceberg. And it seems to be going down to a lot of people. I know you want to hear, we'll recover, we're great Americans. We're great Americans, America's recovered from worse. I heard all this malarkey from these frauds in the media. How do you know this country can survive what we've been through? Three months of being locked up like little deballed sheeple, sheeple by little ninnies in public health departments who look the other way while the riders ride it without masks. The same vermin in the public health departments that tell you to don't open your restaurant yet. You're not ready. But, oh, the rioters, that, well, that, that's another thing. They're just expressing their outrage for the killing of Mr. George. And, and, and that's a righteous, uh, it, it, that's a righteous situation. And, and the virus, it won't attack them because they're good. They're the good ones. The virus won't touch them. They, they're, they're righteous. They don't have to wear a mask. They don't need to social distance. But you, you better do it in your own home. Or a public health ninny will send someone to get you. Oh, and you walked on a beach and you got a ticket for $1,000, but you broke a window and you stole $1,000 worth of clothing and they ushered you out of the store into a waiting car. You're telling me America isn't broken. You're telling me we haven't had a revolution. You're telling me it's not a one-sided revolution. And I'll, I'll close this little opening with the same question. Where is the federal government? All I hear is a lot of talk, but they've done nothing. Nothing, zero, nada, zilch, gornished. I shall return. The Savage Nation. It's Savage On Demand. Look, it's no surprise that what's going on in the world might be contributing to more stress and sleep deprivation. Let Ebb help. Ebb sleep is a wearable solution that fits over the forehead and gently and precisely cools the forehead to reduce those racing thoughts to allow people who are suffering from sleeplessness drift more comfortably into a deeper, more restorative sleep. Ebb is clinically validated, and four out of five users report falling asleep faster and improving overall sleep quality. Ebb sleep understands the uncertainty you may be experiencing at this time and wants to help. Now, does it really work? Robert, one of my producers, has been using Ebb sleep for a few weeks. He's noticed a dramatic change in his sleep. He's falling asleep faster and waking up feeling more rested than he has in years. He's even acting nicer to me. It's got to be that EBV sleep understands the uncertainty you may be experiencing at this time and wants to help. Our listeners can save $25 off what you order by using. Pr My listeners can save $25 off their order by using promo code SAVAGE to save and then continue to try Ebb risk free, risk free, risk free for 60 nights to confirm it's the solution you've been looking for at tryeb.com slash savage. I got to spell it for you because I want you to try it. T-R-Y-E-B-B dot com slash savage. Tryeb.com slash savage. Why don't you let us help you get the sleep you need and remove the risk from your purchase? You win all around. That's T-R-Y-E-B-B dot com slash savage. Tryeb.com slash savage. Promo code savage to save. Would you please order today and get that night's sleep you've been looking for? With everything going on, get the sleep you need and you deserve. Tryeb.com slash savage. Trust Robert. He went to tryeb.com slash savage. And I can tell you, it's really helping him. It will help you. Just go to tryebb.com slash savage. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. 
For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this podcast. I don't know about you, but I sure miss civilization. It's degenerated, and after civilization collapsed through the arts, all hell broke loose. That's what we're living through right now. Everything collapsed after civilization collapsed itself, meaning when once the arts collapse and degenerate into the gutter, and then the gutter and the gutter singers and the gutter actors, the gutter performers, the Instagram sluts, once they are held up as the, the, the role models for America, then you see what happens. The deluge. Après moi, le deluge. Here it is. We're living through it. I don't think there's anybody who does not want order restored in this country. Any sane person. Where are the parents of these white... Let, let's put the, the race aside for a minute. Where are the parents of the white punks who you know and I know live with their parents, these skinny vermin, the ones you'd like to smash their teeth in? Where do they live? Where are the parents? Tell me. One couple put their 20-year-old son in. They brought him in. They're in Portland, Oregon, I think. They caught him with the, the stolen goods. Suspected Antifa anarchist accused of inciting riots turned into police by his parents. I have the story on uh, michaelsavage.com. 20-year-old Brian Bartels just turned himself into police headquarters. He's facing numerous charges in relation to Saturday's protests. Yeah, protests. Okay? Breaking the windows out of a marked Pittsburgh police vehicle. You hear this? So he was arrested because the parents turned them in. Where are the rest of the parents of these rat bum vermin? Where the father, the invisible, ballless father, the radical communist mother living with her girlfriend in the other bedroom? You understand that the parents have everything to do with these kids? Why they are like this? You could say, well, a lot of the other people don't have fathers or this and that. That's an old American social story. I can't resolve it. But when you have parents at home and they've been telling you how bad America is, you think, you know, there's an old saying, little pitchers have big ears. You ever heard that one when the little kids are around? You're not supposed to talk about some things around little children because they're very impressionable. Little pitchers have big ears. So the mother was a communist. The father was a communist. The son then is on drugs, probably Adderall his whole life. And uh, God knows what else. Now he's smoking pot around the clock. Instead of rocking around the clock, he's rioting around the clock breaking windows and he thinks it's a game and it's fun it's a video game i don't know about you but i would like to see the police unleashed on him yesterday i would have liked to have seen it happen last week i would have liked to have seen the cops rush them smack them cuff them oh and other things too but then i'm only a talk show host michael savage a host like no other okay you know i'm a car guy you know I've had a Hellcat. And with the ever-increasing numbers of cars like Dodge, BMW, and Volkswagen, and models like the Hellcat, X3, and Jetta, it's now impossible to stock all the parts you need in a traditional chain storefront. We all know that. I'm a car guy, and I'm telling you why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while a counterman orders the parts on his computer, choosing the only brand his warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com right in your home and in your pocket. One reason to repair and maintain your cars is to save money that you can then use for other important things like the mortgage or food. Why would you choose to spend 30%, 50%, 100% more for the exact same auto parts in a chain store or new car dealership when you could do it at home on your own computer? Now, you may not know this, but chain stores have different price tiers for professional mechanics and do-it-yourselfers. RockAuto.com's prices are the same for everybody, and reliably low they are. RockAuto.com always offers the lowest prices possible, rather than changing prices based on what the market will bear like airlines do. RockAuto.com is for everybody and does not require membership or account login. Does not require this. You could just do it yourself. RockAuto.com is a family business, serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Just go to rockauto.com to shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. They have everything from engine control modules and brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet sets. Whether it's for your classic or daily driver, 
Get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered right to your door. The rockauto.com catalog is unique and remarkably easy to navigate. You can quickly see all the parts available for your vehicle and choose the brands, specifications, and prices you prefer. But best of all, prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low and the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Write SAVAGE in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. That's S-A-V-A-G-E. They have an amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Don't stand online in an auto parts store and wait for the hostile clerk to get back to you. Go to rockauto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. Rock auto. All the parts your car will ever need. Rock auto. Com. I'm having, uh, you know, I'm doing the best I can here in the midst of all this madness. Many of you deluded liberals think you're on the side of the protests, uh, but you're not violent. You know? you're, you're the silent army. Those breaking the windows are really you. They're the ones with the guts that you don't have. You'd really like to be out with them, wouldn't you? Why don't you admit it over there in Berkeley? Wouldn't you really like to be out there uh, with, uh, with the ones breaking in, stealing Dodge Hellcats, stealing cars? taking free stuff. Isn't that what you really believe in, all of you in Berkeley, you tenured professors who can no longer run in the streets? Uh, but these are your people. These young, I love to say young people. Young people. Young people makes them somehow sacred. And the world goes on. Will the country survive this? Well, of course it will, one way or the other. We had the, uh, the COVID lockdowns from the morons in the health departments who still won't let you open restaurants here in San Francisco. What an idiot that is. What a mayor we have. A moron like I never saw. She crippled the city with her stupidity. Uh, science. What science? What the hell is she talking about? The city is crippled. Where the, where the hell is the money going to come from? Mayor Breed. Where the hell did they get you from? Mayor Breed. The perfect, the perfect mayor for a time like this. A one-two punch. Restaurants on the brink of extin uh, extinction. She won't reopen the city. Unbelievable to me. And by the way, in the midst of all of this, we learned something else. We learned a lot of things. Illegal aliens were not looting or rioting. I didn't see any arrested, did you? I mean, we were looking at the illegal aliens for years now. Oh, illegal aliens this, illegal aliens that. Criminals, MS-13. They weren't the ones breaking into stores, were they? I mean, open your eyes to what you are seeing. Who was breaking into stores? Who was robbing cars? Who was trashing your city? I didn't see the Mexicans doing it, did you? You want to be very blunt and very clear about things? I can be as blunt and as clear as possible in order for us to understand what the hell is going on in this country right now. It wasn't the Mexicans looting and rioting. They're building a life for themselves. You know, they come over here and they work their hearts out seven days a week. They raised their children. I've told you this a thousand times for the last 10 years. You remember the show I did many years ago about Kentucky Fried Chicken on a Sunday morning? I was in there once 10 years ago, 15 years ago, KFC, and I saw a Mexican family. Either they had just come from church or they were going to church and they were there with their little girl dressed in a beautiful dress, a little kid. Father was there. The mother was there. The children were there. They worked so hard. They're religious people by and large. They weren't the ones breaking the windows and stealing, were they? No, not at all. But there's nothing new under the sun. My father told me the same thing 50 years ago or more. What, 50? More than 50 years ago. I used to be in his store in a slummy area in Manhattan at the time. Now it's very expensive because the idiots moved into the areas their grandparents fled. Same garbage, but they pay a million dollars, two million dollars for an apartment in the slums in New York. The slums my father ran from to get me away from the dirt. They ran to, all right, that's just a matter of style. I think they're cool because they walk around smoking pell-mell at two in the morning after smoking a, some weed. They, they're, they're Mr. and Mrs. Cool. But uh, there were a lot of Puerto Ricans in New York that came in in the 50s, and they worked very hard, largely in the needle trades. And um, I remember one of the men spoke Spanish or English. I remember which, and I laughed at him. I was a little kid. And my father took me aside when he left. He said, Michael, don't be so 
don't be like that. He said that man speaks better English, better better English than you speak Spanish. You know what I'm saying? In his own way, he didn't talk about tolerance. He was tolerant. It's that very simple. He was tolerant. He didn't talk about tolerance. Another time, I want to talk about another issue. It was a very interesting one. He used to sell, you know, bronze statues, which I still collect my, to this day, a certain number of them, made in France, basically, in the 1880s, 90s. Beautiful, beautiful feet. They're out of style right now. They, they'll come back, I guess, one day. It doesn't really matter. I enjoy looking at them. So anyway, an um, African-American gentleman who was an antique dealer in the South, I can't tell you the state, North Carolina, South Carolina, he used to drive up to New York, and he would buy these statues from my father at whatever price they were, and he would then have them, you know, brought back to his store in North Carolina, South Carolina, and sell them at a profit. That's the way it was. And he was a gentleman, well-dressed, well-spoken, this African-American. Now, I was stunned because, remember, I'm a white kid from New York, and uh, basically the races were separated in New York in those days. I mean, let's be clear. Let's, let's not mince words about it. Everyone lived in their own world. And again... I don't know. A guy would come in and he'd say, well, how much is that one, Ben? $1,200. How much is that one? 900 How much is it? And the guy never bargained. Whatever my father said, he said, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll, you know, whatever he wanted. And he'd buy like 10, 12 pieces, which was a lot of money. And it, it was very important for my father's business at the time. He made a few hundred dollars on each piece. After he bought it from an importer who brought it from France, that's how it worked. So what was the lesson I learned? I learned many lessons. I learned many lessons. I learned a lot about tolerance. I learned a lot about bias. I learned a lot about reality, working in that little store. I became a social worker. My first job out of college was a social worker on New York's Upper West Side, which had degenerated into a slum at that time, which had once been beautiful, beautiful apartments and town brownstones on the Hudson River overlooking the Hudson. I always loved that area was in, inhabited basically by welfare recipients, white, black, Hispanic on welfare. And I was a, a schmuck a social worker. What did I know? I wanted to do good. I was a do-gooder. My job as an investigator for the welfare department was to go around to the apartments and, you know, check on them, I guess. So I'd go into an apartment and I'd see a woman in there and she was supposed to be a single mom, you know, getting a nice big fat check. She was living better than I was as a college graduate, by the way. So I'd look in the apartment and I'd see a pair of men's shoes like a size 16 under the bed. And I wasn't supposed to, you know, she wasn't supposed to have a man in the apartment. So I would report to my supervisor there were men's shoes under the bed, meaning they were lying. Then the phone would ring under the bed. They weren't supposed to have a phone because there was no money for it, supposedly. So I, I got so sarcastic, even as a young guy, I said to the woman once, I said, excuse me, excuse me, Mrs. Smith, your bed is ringing. You ought to answer it. You know, it was my own way. She didn't even get the joke. So I go back to the uh, welfare supervisor in the New York Department of Welfare, which is what it was called then. They changed it to social services. Don't you love it? The welfare department gave the department of social services. I just love it. In order to make the client not feel bad. I love they call them clients. So here I was, a young college graduate, living in a rented apartment out in, in, in Queens, in a place I hated, next to an empty lot. I'm sleeping on a mattress on the floor. I have no, no night tables, no sofa, just a mattress on the floor. It's all we could afford. And I'm writing a check. So the supervisor says to me, okay, Michael, write down what we have to give this person on welfare. I mean, whatever they call it. So write down $600 for a bed, $1,200 for this, $300 for two nightstands, $400 for two lamps. And I said, wait a minute. I don't have a night table and lamps, and I'm a college graduate. She says, well, that's okay, but we have to give it to them because that's the minimal amount of furniture that a civilized person needs to have. That was the beginning of my awakening to the distortion of the welfare state. And it only got worse, much, much worse. And here we are with the riots now. Now, how many of these rioters were let out of jail by Governor Newsom in California? Thousands? New York State, how many were let out under the new sentencing guidelines? And by the way, while we're talking about that, how about Kanye West and that waste of human DNA, whatever her name is, the one I can't even spell her name, that Kardashian creature was in the White House. I got nauseated by it last year, sick. My stomach turned. What the hell were they doing in the White House with Kanye West putting his feet up on the desk? Can you believe it? Can you believe that we watch this? 
because the liberals around the president talked them into having them there and to then passing bail reform, freeing prisoners, releasing them on the streets. How many of them, what percentage of the rioters were those people? Would you know the answer to it? You're never going to get it from Reuters. You're never going to get it from the AP. Never. So I look, I, I can go back. I could just keep, you know, venting, venting, venting. I know you want to vent. I want to read you a tweet because m- most of you are not on Twitter, thank God. You shouldn't be. It's a disgusting place. It's the toilet bowl of the of the intellect. And I went on it years ago. I was on it since 09. I paid no attention to it. Then when Trump started tweeting, I said, look, if that's the nature of the world we're living in and world leaders are now using that, that's OK, I'll start tweeting heavily. So I, I being a writer I and a science writer originally, I can be very succinct. So here's something I tweeted 16 hours ago, which got tremendous, tremendous response. And no one else has touched this yet. Think about this. I wrote our fathers defeated Hitler and we can't beat street vermin looting and burning our cities. Why? Leftist vermin in the media, communist indoctrination in our schools, weak trash leftist mayors and governors handcuffing our police, a weakened central government. That's all. I had to be very succinct and boil it down to a certain number of letters. Can you add anything to that or you disagree with any part of it? I'll repeat it again in case you missed it. Think about this. Our fathers defeated Hitler and we can't beat street vermin looting and burning our cities. Why? Leftist vermin in the media, communist indoctrination in our schools, weak trash leftist mayors and governors handcuffing our police, a weakened central government. If anyone could say it better than that, uh, do me a favor and say it better than that. I think I'll take one call right now. Mike in Sacramento, welcome to the Savage Nation. I hit the wrong button. Uh, give me number six, please. Give me call a six. I hit five by accident. Uh, line six, please. Mike, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. How you doing, Dr. Savage? Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm a black male, you know, that lives in the United States. And all I have to say is that I've been a big fan of yours for many years. And all I have to say is that I'm so sick and tired of the Black Lives Matter movement and all of this because nobody is talking about how black men are killing black men. We're killing ourselves. We kill ourselves more than the police do. But no mm. talking about it. You know, and I'm just Well, because I, it's not a useful it's not a useful um uh concept for the communists, the white communists, you know, who are running these violent protests. Right. And I mean we we both know who's behind this. These mobs are not spontaneous. They are organized. They are funded. And I'm surprised Trump has not yet stopped the funding of Antifa. He said he was going to call it a domestic terrorist group. Nothing has happened. And you know. the thing is, too, it, it, you know, you, you don't have to say it. I'll say it for you. It's black folks out there looting and stealing, whether they want to admit it or not. I see the Well, but come on, an awful lot of them are white punks from the suburbs as well. You can see that, right? I agree with that. Right. You could see these skinny white punks. They're usually very cowardly. They go in packs like like the mad dogs that they are. And they're the ones who are doing a lot of the damage as well. So wait, before you go. So you basically say as as an African-American, you're tired of hearing about Black Lives Matter. I'll tell you the same thing goes on in other races. As a person who is Jewish, as I am, I don't like people who use the Holocaust as a weapon, by the way. In other words, I know people who are quite prominent as Jews and every other word out of their mouth is out. The Holocaust, this, the Holocaust, that. Of course, we shouldn't forget the Holocaust, but don't make believe you you suffered from it personally. That's the same crap with the reparations amongst African-Americans, isn't it? Yes. And, uh, and the thing is, I grew up in a household where, you know, my father, you know, he was a Christian. You know, they, they my parents, I grew up in a two parent household and um, my dad never taught us to. Uh, except, you know, get handouts. You know, I had to work for everything. Well, here's the thing. You just said the key point to this religion, 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 Christianity. And and I grew up, truthfully, I don't want to go into a whole story to show how good I am and all of this. I've been in black churches since I'm 20 years old. I don't have to get my bona fides. I think you know, as an African-American, who I am. You can tell by my voice and what I've said over the years. So I don't have to qualify it. Okay? I understand exactly what you are saying. The Christianity that was central to the African-American experience up until the communist movement of the 60s is what kept this country whole. And once Christianity was thrown out of the schools and once the degenerate vermin on vermin left destroyed Christianity 
the best of it. Once they did that, all hell broke loose. I thank you for the call, sir, and I thank you for listening to the show. I'll be right back. The Savage Nation. It's savage, uncut, unfiltered, and raw. How is it right now in America? How is it to be an African-American male who has made a life for himself, followed the law, went to school, maybe built a business, whatever, they are the ones who are most vulnerable now to hatred. Not the street vermin, not the gangs that were looting. It's going to be that man in the middle who is going to get the wrath. The Westwood One Podcast Network. Fans of the spoken word, welcome. This is a podcast. Greetings, pod recipients. You are entering the Savage Nation. Read the book. See the movie. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, the world's most exciting podcast, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, New York Times best-selling author and National Radio Hall of Fame inductee, Michael Savage. I have strongly recommended to every governor to deploy the National Guard in sufficient numbers that we dominate the streets. Mayors and governors must establish an overwhelming law enforcement presence until the violence has been quelled. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. I hope so. Now, you know and I know that the the psychopathic liberal governors who are interested only in feathering their own nests and the nests of their supporters, here in the midst of this epidemic of violence, after the epidemic that they created mentally, locking us in our houses, destroying our economies, destroying our businesses and our lives. In the middle of it all, Gavin Newsom, just hours ago, sneaks in an executive order to expand early voting in the election of 2020. Now, why would he do that at a time like this? Newsom will let the cities basically burn to the ground. What is he concerned with? He's concerned only with power, which relates to money, like all the rest of them. The same with Governor Linguini there in New York. Cuomo. Talks loud, talks tough, but what has he done? He let the streets be trashed, and he's blaming it on de Blasio. So the president is right, but will the president do anything? Or will he be constrained and controlled by the... uh, Liberal voices in the inner circle. Do I have to name them? Now, come on, I get it on the internet. We all know what's going on here. President says one thing, then he does another. He means well. He knows his heart's in the right place. But you know what? We don't need a heart in the right place right now. We need the National Guard or the uh, military in the right place. Not, not the heart. We don't care what your heart is. What about that Bible thing the other day outside the church? I, I didn't quite follow it. I tried to tune it out. I'll be frank with you. I saw him outside the church that had been burned partly, and then the Bible was upside down. I, I guess he was trying to show the religious uh, folks that he was going to protect the religious institutions, which wasn't a bad thing. It made sense, by the way. And then going to the Catholic monument, I thought that made sense. Well, what's the big uproar? He's trying to reassure religious people that their institutions won't be sacked by these vandals. Well, well, what's wrong with that? What, everything he does is wrong? Everything he does is wrong to the vermin who've destroyed this country. Make no mistake about who destroyed America. There are many elements to it, but the media is the central element to it all. Now, you add to that Zuckerberg, Dorsey, and, uh, you know, the other one with the Google guys who are always behind the scenes, Tim Cook. They could control the rioters by controlling the sites that they control on which they are communicating uh, their actions of wanton destruction and thievery, but they won't because it's bad for the bottom line. All that matters to the pirates of Silicon Valley is the bottom line. 
just that all that matters to the hedge fund operators is the bottom line. So the hedge fund operators have probably caused more, more damage to this economy than all the rioting put together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You think I don't know it? I'm not blind. I can name them, too, if you'd like. Who was the one Ackerman, I think, a few weeks ago? Remember what Ackerman did? He came out and said he was shorting the market, then he longed it. He said the market was going to cla- collapse. Remember that? He made a, what, a couple of billion dollars. Probably more damage done to this economy than all the rioters put together. Oh, yeah. Don't think I don't see it. I- I've got a kaleidoscopic view of the world. I see it all at once. I see it all at once. Yes, indeedy. That's what Devil's Islands were cl- created for in the past. But those days are gone. Come on, we don't live in the past. We live in the modern America of today. The tolerant America of today. No police. or Police are not allowed to do their jobs. I mean, I, what the hell does the military do? I don't even know. What, what do they do? There was time in the past they dropped the 82nd Airborne in and the riots stopped in a few days. Yes, there were dead bodies littering the streets. But the city was it survived. Those days are over, right? Because what would happen if, if Trump dropped the 82nd Airborne on Philadelphia for, to stop the vermin? Or Chicago? What would Wolf Blitzer do then? Oh, oh, what would Wilf Lutzer do then? What would Jake Tapparino do? Old Jake Tapparino. Is he the one giving them water? during? Who was it in Washington, D.C. who gave them water during the riots and let them in their houses? Who are those? What do they think? It was like, they were like during the, the runaway slave period? What are they, crazy? You give rioters water during mayhem like this and you think you're a good liberal? No, you are the rioter. You just don't have the guts to go break a window and steal because you probably stole it generations ago. That's why you're guilty. See, I'm very lucky. I told you I did a show a few weeks ago of maintaining the vision of the view of the world of a peasant. Being an immigrant son who's worked for every dime I have, who struggled since I'm six years old to overcome racism, to overcome bias, and then only to face the racism and bias of the left establishment who denied me my my birthright in this country. But you see, I was too smart and too strong to be broken by them. So I went around them 26 years ago, created my own life when they denied me the life I thought I wanted. And I created this life and it's been a quarter of a century of struggles. I'm still I'm still struggling to this day. Another man would have been broken by what's being done to me right now. Oh, yeah, you don't know anything about it. You think I just get up here and talk. You think all is well and good in the world of radio. You have no idea what I'm going through. And one day you shall know. But it won't matter because those who are doing it to me will be long gone. They will have taken the uh, they will have sacked the uh, the treasuries. They'll be long gone as they bail out. But he says, it's not easy. You have to overcome opposition everywhere you go. There have been impediments in my way every step of the day. So what? Every step of the way, there's been impediments. No one smoothed it because I'm a white kid. No one gave me a secret handshake and a wink and ushered me into secret places. To give me a heads up. No one g- gave me anything. Nothing. When my four- poor father died, you know what he left for me? $3,500. That's all he could leave me. It wasn't even a lot of money then. I, I wasn't upset by it. He had no, you know, he-, he had the house. He gave my mother. God bless him. I'm not de- denigrating him. He came over. He never went past high school. He started by pushing a push cart. You can laugh all you want. Laugh if you want. He was a dignified man. He worked every day of his life. He would rather have died than take welfare. He never even talked about it. And he pulled himself up from the slums. We got an attached house in Queens, one car, one vacation a year in some cheap uh, cottage. uh, To me, it was paradise. It was paradise because there were good, clean parents, God-fearing in their own way. Not him. He was an atheist. He he laughed at those who believed in God. He did, truthfully. He had such a Russian realist view of the world. Oh, God. What, cyn- what, what cynicism to be a little kid and listen to that. Daddy, what happens after you die? He says, nothing. I don't know. You could throw me in a garbage can after I die. I don't know. That's all. That, that's very, really inspiring to a five-year-old boy asking about God. Nothing, he said. Throw me in a garbage can. I need the idea of throwing your father in a garbage can. So I had to overcome a lot of psychological damages. <laughs> Let's say assaults upon my consciousness. I was damaged by it. I'll admit it. Or shall I say cauterized by it? Or shall I say like the uh, oyster that is irritated by the burning rod that produces a pearl, I am that oyster 
who was cauterized by that burning, that burning piece of metal. You know, my father even told me when I was a little kid, he would tell me weird stories. I didn't even understand them. He would say, you know, Michael, he said, you know what the, how they produce pearls? They take a little hot wire and they put it in the oyster and then the oyster produces a pearl. I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. To him, I was that, uh, that oyster. And I guess he wanted me to produce some pearls of wisdom. So I've written 25 or so books, done a few things that I think are useful. But what good is it all? You know, at the end of the road, what good is it all when there is no conservative movement in this country? And if you want to get me started on the conservatives in the media, oh, don't open up that door, please. If you want to unleash on the great Americans, I will unleash one day like you've never heard. In some ways, they're worse than the rioters for lying to you every day about how good they are. What man gets up and tells you he's such a good man? What man gets on a TV show and says, I'm good, you're good, you're great, I'm great, he's great, you're... What grown man does that and thinks that you will believe them? So we, the people in the middle, have to put up with all of this lie, these, this crap, or that, that, that one on, on Fox News, the crosswear. You want me to get started with her? You want, me to, you want me to level? You want me to open up on her one day? I will. I'll be glad to do it. Jim is smiling. He knows what, what happened. The one who said she'd have me on her show after she was on my show with her book three times in a row. And then the minute she got a show on Fox, the door suddenly closed. Oh, don't you think I'd have you on if I could? Then I wake up and they're squeaking on her show. The same squeaky who was threatening her every day when she worked at the same syndicator I did. You want me to talk about that? I won't. The same squeaky lawyer who makes believe he's another great American. The one who sounds like uh, Mickey Mouse on Laughing Gas. Another great American. He's just a slimy lawyer. That's all he is. How, how many slimy lawyers can pretend they're great Americans and you buy this? Cr- I don't understand this country anymore. Apparently, there's a sucker born every minute and you think it's limited to the left. You're mistaken. Oh, you are so mistaken. So who do you blame for letting the riots run out of control? Oh, you only blame the George Soros and the left. How about the profiteers who consider themselves to be conservatives? Every minute they're quoting how great they are. They're not responsible for this. They've done nothing in their lives but capitalize on your fears. There's a lot of blame to go around. Can't blame them, the left, for everything, can you? Who's going to pick up the pieces after this is all over? Who is going to pick up the pieces after this is all over? Who are you going to believe in after all of this? Who? Who are you going to vote for? You want to start working on that one? I'm not ready for it. I am not ready to talk about what I'm hearing because it's not very good. If you think that everyone out there is a dummy, you're mistaken. And I will tell you, there's such defection right now in the ranks uh, after these riots on uh, this side of the aisle, if you want to say there's an aisle at all. Silent majority, Breitbart. Poll shows American voters support use of military National Guard in riots. Of course they do. Of course they do. Hispanic voters support the use of the National Guard. 54% 54% of polled Hispanic voters either strongly or somewhat support the use of the National Guard. Uh, it's an enormous uh, study. And again, I'll have to reiterate that you'll notice illegal aliens are not looting or rioting. You were told that they were all bad, they were no good. When I told you something else, I told you over the years and my position has been consistent. I've never seen people work as hard in my life, particularly the Mexican people that I've gotten to know and respect. Trust me. They work seven days a week. They're family people. They save their money to to build a life for themselves in the country. They're not the problem. They're not looting and rioting. No, no, indeed. Not them at all. But what about the Republicans out there? Who do they support after all of this? Who do the Republicans support after all of this? You could argue Trump's doing the best he can, but is that good enough? Michael Savage said, you could say he's doing the best he can, but that's not good enough. Michael Savage said, he, he's doing the best he can, but that's not good enough. Shall I repeat it again until you get it? You could say he's doing the best he can, but that's not good enough, said Michael Savage. Could say that. I mean, I hear a lot about the, the 82nd Airborne and the tanks are rolling in and the caissons are rolling along. I see nothing, though. Nothing is business as usual. Probably another fundraiser next week somewhere. You can blame anyone you want. You can blame everyone 
if you want, but blame yourself at the end of the day because we're all we're all we're all responsible for what just happened. Whatever happened to the the citizens militia that we thought would arise up in the time of insurrection? Where is it? Well, it actually appeared in Southern California in a remote mountain town. A group of these punks came into town to cause havoc. They got there. Uh, let's just say they were beaten up in this in, the, in an arco station. Did you see that story? They came to town. They thought that they'd run over the yokels down in town there, that the local guys would just put up with it. I, I got to find that story. 855-407-282 is the phone number. I don't know where it went on my website. Who knows? I can't keep up with it anymore. No one can. But uh, there's a town in Southern California, and uh, they try to run over the white guys in the town, the really big men. They gave them a beating in that gas station. All the punks ran home to their mommy screaming, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. And they didn't put it on Instagram. Back in a minute. The Savage Nation. It's Savage On Demand. It is the Savage Nation. Uh, Donald Trump, President Trump, will be on Newsmax TV tonight at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern. Just got the notice from my good friend Chris Ruddy. Of course, he won't be on this show. The inner circle keeps the president away. I mean, he goes on obscure shows I never heard of. Hey, they, they got a job to do. And of course, the job does not include going to the core audience that, that uh, had him elected. That's all. That's their job. The job is to make sure he's undermined so he doesn't get reelected. That's his staff right now. You think I don't see what's going on? President Trump was elected primarily because of this audience. I don't have to say it because you know it. Even Salon Magazine, Left Wing Magazine, called me the father of Trumpomania. They know that I was the architect of his election. I was told that by inner, inner circle people. That's fine. I'm glad I did it. And uh, he's yet to appear on the show once since then. Bunnies on obscure shows you never heard of. That's because the inner circle is, is guiding him on shows. And I think they're misguiding him, by the way, on purpose. I'm not really imp- very impressed with his media team. Who was that, that, that blonde that he hired, the, the press secretary? Where did she come from? Macarini, or Macaroni, Mary Macaroni, Macarini. What is he with this, all these girls from like TV shows? Where is like some stable press person? Uh, look, to each his own, but I don't know. To me, it's all connected. It's all interconnected right now. And who told him to go to the churches? It was, a, it was okay to tell it. Religious people that will protect your religious institutions. I get it. Was that the right time? Was the timing right? Who oh, no. You can blame anyone you want. For, you see, the fault lines are not as clear as they were before this rioting and insurrection. And by the way, we have a little civil war going on within the conservative side where people who are like brother against brother are no longer talking to each other. That's also happened. Oh, yes. Oh, Yes. I'll tell you that. Uh, I'll tell you about that one day. It's like a civil war within the conservative movement. Michael Savage, a host like no other. You know, I'm going to close with something that's a little off the topic. Have you watched Epstein on Netflix? You will see Alan Dershowitz, the great constitutional lawyer in his own mind, explaining his defense of the serial child molester. You will gag. I put on Epstein on Netflix because a friend of mine who's high up in the media said, you got to watch it. And uh, Epstein is such a horrible human being, molesting these girls, 14 years old, mainly poor girls from trailer parks. It was awful from West Palm Beach. You could throw up from it. And how they ruin these kids' lives, what it does to girls who are then oh, molested by old men like this. How, you know, you don't really know it as a guy, what it does to a girl's soul to be used like that and what it does to them the rest of their life. So I watch Epstein... And the more I watch it, the more I hated Epstein. I really had no real uh, knowledge of what, how bad he was. The hundreds of girls he molested. Okay, then it gets worse when you see Alan Dershowitz, one of his lawyers, explain his defense of the serial child molester. It makes you even sicker than you would be about Epstein to see what the legal profession can be. You just gag from it. At least I did. That's all. So when people are scared, they vote right, not left. At least that's what has been through time. I don't think it's going to go the other way, incidentally. Has anyone seen Epstein on Netflix? Do you agree with me on that? What's this? What was that sound? Like a weird... 
Oh, it's a Netflix sound. I like that. It's a nice sound. I've been watching, um, to get my mind off this, I watch a lot of mafia stuff, praying that the mafia was here, that John Gotti could stop it. You know, some, where's organized crime to stop these rioters? I keep saying, where are they? You know, in the old days, you see, like, organized crime, they were so tough, that gangs, they could stop the riot. Where are they? Where are they? I don't understand where they are. Those days are gone. They're all, they're all gone. And they're wearing suits now. I don't know where they are. They always wore suits, but I mean, they're like working somewhere. I, where are they? They're not working the streets anymore. Like, in the, you know, I remember in the 60s, the hippies rioted about the war on Wall Street. They, were, they announced it in advance. They were going to riot on Wall Street. I believe it was the head of the plumbers union, a tough Irishman, unleashed his plumbers from a job building a high rise for the afternoon, gave them the time off. They waded into the hippies with, with pipes, lead pipes. And that was the last of the riots in New York at the time. Then they, then they went back to the building the building. But I'm not recommending it. I'm saying those are the, I grew up with that kind of world. The streets were safe. By and large, they were safe until the hippies destroyed America in the 60s under the guise of peace and love, and they were all communists. And uh, now we have this 50 years later, 60 years later. It's gotten so bad that the police can't even do their job. That, that, that is the police who are willing to and capable of putting down the feral animals can't do their job. I saw a terrible story of another couple of black cops who tried to do their job in, in Atlanta who were fired by the, by the, the uh, crazy mayor of Atlanta. She fired them for dragging two troublemakers out of the car. They looked like organizers to me. The cops didn't do it just for fun. She fired the cops. Who would take this job after this? Who in the hell wouldn't retire if they could after this? Any of my friends, these are troubling times, and I'll try to be here for you as long as God lets me. Thank you for listening. You can hear the entire program from today in about an hour, wherever podcasts are heard. Good night, and God bless America. Westwood One Podcast Network. 